Today we're driving the 2022 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport Touring, and we have Joy of Joys, a six-speed manual transmission. Let's walk you around this new Civic Hatchback, show you what it's like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive and hopefully give you guys an idea of what it's like to live with this new hatchback coming out this year. We have a lot of cargo space in the back of this. Actually, you know what? Let's just go back there and show you around. A few months ago, we drove the new Civic Sedan, and I really, really like that car. The CVT was ultra smooth, and actually, this manual is pretty good too. The manual is available in both the Sport and the Sport Touring trims, so you can have it with a base 2-liter naturally aspirated engine or this turbocharged 1.5-liter. It makes 180 horsepower, 177 pound-feet of torque, a little over 3,000 pounds. It's rated for 28 miles to the gallon in the city, 37 on the highway. A lot of cargo space in the back of this hatchback with the seats folded down like we have now. You can fit all sorts of stuff back here. Mountain bikes, furniture. You even get a compact spare tire with a jack and some other accessories. Let's fold these rear seats up, show you what cargo looks like with everything up. A lot of room in the back. Seats, tons of leg space. This is encroaching upon Accord levels of interior volume. Honda always does a really nice job with their interior packaging. Really nice looking hatchback. The rear end, I think, is a bit of a funky design, but I think it still keeps in with the rest of the car. Less hatchback and more lift back. This is 4.9 inches shorter than the sedan, and that's all just in the rear end. The rest of the car is pretty much the same. We have a slightly different front grille where the Honda badge is located, but Really, that's kind of the only difference between this and the sedan. Same engine, same interior. We have a slightly stiffer rear suspension setup. A little bit beefier sway bar, 8% stiffer rear springs. Tons of legroom, tons of space in the back of this. You get a couple of USB ports, a nice armrest. The leather in the sport touring trim feels very good. This comes in at $29,400. It's also available in a CVT, but I gotta say this manual is a big improvement, especially over the Honda Civic Sport that we had in the previous generation. Let's show you under the hood. This is a really nice torquey 1.5 liter turbo, super fuel efficient, spools up very quickly, you got a lot of torque down low. Pulls nicely into the high revs. Doesn't sound like much, it's pretty quiet, but at least it's an exposed engine. Look how easy this thing is to work on. Turbocharger's right there. No engine covers. I gotta give Honda credit for keeping their engines natural looking. Pretty good looking car in my opinion. I like the front end. The profile looks pretty good too. And look at the stance. These wheels are really pushed out nicely to the edges of the car. Two functional exhaust tips in the back. Let's hop up front, show you guys around this interior. I'll we'll take this thing for a drive. We also get a Bose sound system in this new Civic. Really nice sound system. I think it's slightly better than the Mazda CX-30's Bose. It's up there with some of the best audio in the industry and for the price point, you can't beat it. We have a couple different drive modes in this manual trim, eco mode and eco mode off. Um, I can't really tell the difference between eco mode and normal mode. I think the throttle is just dulled a little bit, but that's about it. We get a bunch of different Honda sensing and safety features, road departure mitigation, blind spot information, low speed braking control, and colli collision mitigation braking. This fully digital gauge cluster is really nice. It's easy to read, it's simple, it's sharp. There's not too much information to distract you. You can add certain things like your fuel economy, your range, navigation, who's sitting in your car. 
maintenance, stuff like that, to this right display, or you can just choose to have no content. And on the left side, you can also customize various things with your radio and phone. I really love what Honda's done with this interior. Everything is a button, a knob, a control, no touch haptic feedback stuff except for the screen. And even then you get physical home and back buttons with a volume knob, track selection. This infotainment is pretty responsive. We have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is fantastic. Touch screen works great. It comes, it falls to hand very easily. Position next to the steering wheel. We have a bunch of different settings, customizable features. You can go in, change your Bose center point sound. A lot of vehicle settings too that you can adjust. TPMS calibration, driver assist system setup. Take a look at this manual transmission. It's a lot stiffer and a lot tighter than the previous generation. I liken the 10th generation Civic's manual to uh, a Logitech shifter. <laughs> I wasn't a fan. This is a big improvement. I'll show you guys what it's like on the road here soon. A lot of nice cargo space, decently sized cup holders. There's the glove box. These vent controls are really nice. Just a, a simple, easy to use, user-friendly, minimal interior. And uh, that kind of plays out to the rest of the vehicle too. Honda has gone a really nice direction with this new Civic. We've got a decent reverse camera, pretty wide angle. You can adjust your view angle there. Not the highest resolution or prettiest display, but it shows you what you need to see. Turning lines too, which is always great. Electronic parking brake. It will disengage automatically as soon as you set off, which is nice. We've got a great little spot here to charge our phone with wireless charging. We get a couple USB ports too, a 12 volt, 180 watt cigarette lighter port, comfortable seats, a good amount of storage in the door pockets, auto up down windows for the front two windows, parking sensors, traction control, little place to put your sunglasses up here. There's the sunroof. You can tilt or push it all the way back. Those move to block the sun. All right, I think it's a walk around. Let's take this thing for a drive. So, clutch pedal, super lightweight. Not a lot of feel at the engagement point, but about average for most modern manual transmissions in this class. The steering is light. This car feels taut and well planted. Like I mentioned earlier, torque comes on pretty early down low on the power band in this new Civic. This is a great engine. And paired with a six-speed manual, it's pretty fun to drive. It's not quite a Civic Si, but it's a really nice in-between Decently quick, 180 horsepower goes a long way in this car. The pedals are well positioned for heel toe downshifting. We've got a little bit of rev hang in the higher RPMs. But your inputs here feel really nice. I like the steering feel. It weights up nicely around a corner. I actually really like the shifter feel here. This is Honda doing a nice job with their shifter in this car again. It's just notchy enough. It's a bit of a shorter throw too, which I appreciate. Engine is nice and responsive too. It responds well to rev match downshifts. There's quite a bit of rev hang, which is to be expected. Nothing's changed in the last decade with regards to that. But still, that said, it's not terrible and it's not a deal breaker. Driving this car around for the last 30, 40 minutes or so, it's gotten more accustomed and more attuned to my driving style. Let's do a quick brake test. 
Ooh, yeah, that feels good. Let's turn off traction control and we'll do a zero to 60. Second gear tops out about 55 miles per hour. Turn everything back on there. Decently quick. Guys, this is kind of one of the last manual transmission hatchbacks on sale these days. I really applaud Honda for selling this in both the Sport and Sport Touring trims. It's so nice to be able to get this with both engine configurations and get this in a pretty much fully loaded car. Really the only thing you're missing out on in this uh, manual Civic hatchback are just some of the Honda sensing features. It can't quite do the same things that it can with an automatic transmission because there's a clutch pedal and you as the driver and the car wouldn't want to bring itself all the way down from speed and stall. That would be pretty dangerous. So we've got some, we've got some concessions that we have to make for the manual. But overall, I think if you're an enthusiast, you want a fun daily driver commuter that's efficient and well priced guys this is the best option on the market i definitely take one of these over a corolla i think it's a bit more fun to drive definitely quicker much more spacious this 1.5 turbo really does have a satisfying pull to it front end of this car just feels awesome. It's so sharp. Really darts into a corner nicely. Get a hint of understeer on throttle, but overall for a front wheel drive car, this is a really nice neutral chassis. The ride's a little bit stiffer than the sedan, but I don't know if you would notice it too much back to back. Just that rear end is a little bit tighter. It gives this car a bit more rotation and a more active chassis, which I appreciate. I believe it's a solid rear sway bar, slightly tweaked from the sedan, and we have 8% stiffer spring rates in this hatch all across the board. My question is, if this Civic Sport is this good to drive? What's the Civic Si gonna be like? And then, what's the Civic Type R gonna be like? This is a really, really great starting point for the Civic. If you're not interested in the Si, this is a fantastic option. The handling here, the chassis, there's really not much you can improve upon it, except for maybe a stickier tire. So one quick note with tires and NVH with this new Civic hatchback, this does have a different Continental tire on it than the Civic sedan. I believe the Civic sedan had Goodyear's, and there was quite a bit of impact noise and NVH over bumps. And you'll notice in this drive that the Civic hatchback is considerably quieter over rough pavement than the sedan is. And that's partially due to some more sound insulation throughout the car, but also that tire change makes a big difference. So uh, one of my only complaints about the sedan, I think has been addressed pretty well here with this hatchback with this Continental tire and uh, the extra added sound insulation. If you compare both videos, you'll see that in this drive. Really kind of struggling to come up with any complaints about this new Civic. It's such a great overall car. It looks great. Functionally, fantastic. Very user-friendly, easy to live with. The performance here is really nice. It's fun to drive. It's a little bit quiet. It has its pros and cons. And always make things louder with the aftermarket. The rev hang isn't awesome, but it's to be expected from Honda, and also it's this is still a fun car to drive with it. Just gotta let that clutch out a little bit sooner. There's a bit of tire noise over potholes, but it's not bad. I feel like this is maybe a little bit quieter than the sedan was over bumps. I'm gonna have to live with it for a little bit this week, but we can have a conversation in here, it's fine. We're on a pretty rough road right now, and it's not like we're driving on run flats. It doesn't sound like that. Off throttle, there's not a lot of engine braking. The 
relationship between the way the engine builds boost, the pedals, the shifter. It's a pretty pleasurable driving experience. I'm impressed, you guys. I didn't really know what to expect with this new Civic Hatch manual. And getting behind the wheel and spending some time with it, this is a fun little car. I think what the SI and the Type R will just build upon this is just add more excitement, more boost, better engine sounds. Hopefully they don't ruin uh, the engine piped in sound like they did with the previous SI and the new one. We're going to test that out in a few weeks heading out to California to drive the new SI and I have high hopes after driving the Civic Sport hatchback. You can even heel toe. And that last thousand RPM you almost feel like you could hear a hint of VTEC, but of course there isn't any. But the engine just kind of comes on, gets a little bit louder, which is nice. You get a slight vibration through the steering wheel. Below 5,000 RPM, the rev hang actually isn't too bad. It's really when you get up into those higher revs is where it presents itself. You guys can see it as soon as I let off the gas put the clutch pedal on the revs are still dropping relatively quickly it's a, I think it might even be a little bit of an improvement over previous generation civics There's no auto rev matching in this car, you have to do it all yourself. Definitely another feature that the Civic SI and or Civic Type R will add. Brakes feel really nice too. Pretty stiff pedal, very positive engagement, nice bite. This still has the same wheelbase as the sedan, but that shorter overhang on the rear end gives this car a little bit more of a flickable, fun feel around the corners. The wiper nozzles are integrated inside the wiper. That's always cool. just super impressive. The thing I like most about the Civic Hatchback is that it's a fluid car to drive with the manual transmission. That's kind of one of my biggest concerns about any new car that comes out with a manual is, has the company done the due diligence and done the development to make it a good manual transmission? It's going to have a pretty low take rate from buyers, only 5 to 10 percent probably. And have they made the effort to make it a good manual? And I'm glad to report that Honda has. This this manual transmission feels great. It's a fluid, natural driving experience. All of your inputs work and correspond nicely. Would I take the manual over the CVT? Personally, yeah, I probably would. The CVT is really nice in this car, though. It's a fantastic transmission. It is great being able to row your own gears and just having control over everything, though with this six-speed. Let's see how it handles a roundabout. Oh yeah, nice 
nice rotation. Very little understeer. Fun little autocross car, too. All right, guys, so pretty high marks for the new Civic hatchback in this sport touring trim. This is all kind of all you'd really want out of a daily driver. Very excited to drive this car and experience it today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it gave you a good idea of what this thing is like behind the wheel. If you want to see a sound system test, stay tuned uh, or check out the sound system test from the Bose audio in the Civic sedan that we tested a few months ago. If you want to see more driving videos on this Civic Hatchback Sport, I uploaded a video to the Winding Road Magazine channel, just driving, no talking. Oh, I think we had a slightly better time in this video. The rear end is growing on me. I just love the stance of this car. These 18 inch wheels look pretty good. You still get a decent amount of sidewall on here. For what it is, it does what it needs to, and uh, that's all you can ask. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We might be doing another video on the Civic Sport, the two-liter naturally aspirated engine car. I'm not sure if they'll have one here. They probably will, but if they do, you'll see an upload on that. This 1.5 turbo, though, might be the one to go. This is a fun car to drive. Quick enough, handles great, practical, looks good, does all the things. Well done, Honda. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.